Illustrator contains very powerful tools for creating vector-based graphs that make it easy to represent complex information in an understandable way. Let's take a closer look at creating graphs in Illustrator CS6. As you can see, I'm beginning this video with the chart.ai file already open on my machine. And there's nothing special about this document. It's simply a 10 by 10 Illustrator file with a 10 inch by 10 inch artboard that I'm going to use to create some graphs. Now the first thing you need to do to create a graph in Illustrator is you need to select one of the graph tools. So if you click on the graph tool located down here, by default it's going to use your column graph tool. But if you click and hold on that button, you'll notice that we have a range of different graphs that we can create inside of Illustrator. So I'm going to start with a real basic graph called the pie graph tool. And there's a couple of ways that you can begin creating a graph in Illustrator. One way is to simply click once using the graph tool and the graph dialog will ask you how big you want the graph to be. So I'm going to set the width to 5 and the height to 5 inches as well. I'll go ahead and click OK and it's going to create a basic pie graph for me with a default value here. Now logic would tell you that if you started plugging in some numbers here that it would update the graph. So let's go ahead and start here. This is very similar to Microsoft Excel if you're familiar with that. I have the first cell highlighted so I'm going to type 45 in that cell. Go ahead and press return. Let's go ahead and type 25 and 15 and then maybe 20. And if I click the check mark you'll notice that the information is not quite what you might have expected. Well, that's because for a pie graph, we need the data to be represented in a different way. So one of the things we can do is right up here, you'll notice that we have a transpose row column button. And if I click on that, it will swap the data so that they're now going horizontally across the row. If I click on the check mark, now it updates into the pie chart that I was expecting. Now, we might want maybe a legend for this because right now we don't really know what these numbers mean. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click and drag to highlight all four of those cells. I'm going to copy them using Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows. I'll highlight the second row and paste that same data using Command V on Mac or Control V on Windows. Now up here at the top, I'm going to enter some information that represents these data values. So in the first cell, first row, I'm going to type yes, press the tab key, no, tab, maybe, and one more tab, I'm going to type sometimes. And if we hit the tab key again, you'll notice that the values update here. And if we click the check mark, you'll notice that a legend is now created that represents the data in the pie graph. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and close that data source and I'm going to click on the graph tool and choose the column graph tool this time. Another way that you can create a graph is instead of just clicking once you can click and drag to define the exact area that your graph should occupy. So again the data source window opens up now this time I'm actually going to import some data and I have a couple of tab delimited files out in our exercise files folder that we're going to use here. So I'm going to click on this first button which is import data and I'm going to navigate to my desktop and I'm going to go into the exercise files folder into lesson 15 the graphs folder and I'm going to choose the chart data file and I'll choose the open button. Now we can see here that we have our data down here in the second row and we have these values up here at the top and those values are in quotes and the reason for that is so that we're telling Illustrator not to look at it as being data but instead as values for the fields. So I'm going to click the check mark and you'll notice that those fields in quotes now are represented by the legend and the values are representing using your bars. I'm going to go ahead and close that data window and we can see now that the column graph has been generated for us. And that looks exactly the way that we wanted it to. Now the interesting thing about these graphs is 
you can change them even after they've been created. So for example, this bar graph or this column graph is currently selected. We can switch to our selection tool to make sure that this is selected as a unit. And if we go to the object menu and come down to graph, we can choose type. And this opens up a whole other window that allows us to change the type of graph that this is. So for example, we could click on the stacked column graph. If I click OK, you'll see now the data is represented differently. This particular data is not one that's well represented using a stacked graph, but you can see how this changes the information. Go to Object Graph and go to Type again. We can choose a row column or a bar graph instead. So we'll click OK. Now you can see that the data is represented in a horizontal fashion. You can go to Object Graph and choose Type and see all the different options that you have available to you. You can add a drop shadow to your graph. You can change the bar width. Maybe the bars are too fat. Maybe we want to change that to maybe 70%. And if we click OK, we can see now that the information is represented in a different way. And you can see the shadow is now located behind each one of these charts. Probably make more sense if we colorized that graph so that the drop shadows appeared more contrasty based on the data that's showing here. So I'm going to go to Object one more time, go to Graph, and choose Type. I'll turn off the drop shadow. Some other options you have here, we can put the legend across the top instead of the location that's there. So we'll choose that, click OK, and now the data is represented across the top of the graph. Again, Object Graph Type. And you'll also notice you can control some other options here. Up here at the top, where we have graph options, we can choose value axis and control the properties of the different value axes that are in this graph. You can have it draw tick marks based on a certain division. You can also put a prefix and suffix on the labels as well. You can click on category axis and again control the tick marks, how far apart they're located, and we can go ahead and click OK one more time. Now I think I like the legend on the side of the graph instead of at the top here. So again, we just go to Object, Graph, and choose Type. Go to the Graph Options up here, and turn off Add Legend across top. Go ahead and click OK, and now our data is represented the way that I wanted it to be. As you can see, once you understand how to work with graphs in Illustrator, you'll be able to create graphs that represent your data in a clear and concise manner.